the ghost of the forest. They are really hard to find in the wild to the point where we don't even know their true population size. You see they tiptoe to keep from being heard and they'll lay their horns on their back to sign to get to teach. The opopi is a natural hider because their dark bodies look like the shadows. The stripes on their back look like rays of sun when they walk around. When they stand still though, they look like a zebra. They're actually related to a giraffe. But that similar bone structure and share long tongues to get their food. Ooh, on the left, it's against the wall on the left corner. A black rhinoceros. Yeah, rhino. Looks like a rock. <laughs> I'll show you another one. They're usually alone due to how territorial they are. They are very lucky to say we even saw one or due to poaching on their horns. They're also endangered. There are less than 5,000 of them left in the wild today. Off on the right up top on that hill, those are called Greater Kudu. They stand still and listen. If they hear danger, they're jumping as high as 8 feet in the air to be their predators. My personal favorite thing. They do look like deers, but they bark like dogs. Side to the 
If you see that big tan guy in the right corner by that tree stump, that's called an elid. Let's see if we can get around on the other side where it gets a lot closer to the full of the animals at the same time. As you try to do that on the left, I think that they're over here in this grass in the corner. Those are called African wild dogs. Sure, if you can find them, just born a few weeks ago. Both of them are actually right next to each other right there. The stripes, of course, they're unique to each one of them. That's how they can identify each other, especially the baby to its mother. The stripe pattern is unique to their species. So if you notice, their white underbelly and the thicker stripes. Those are the heart bit bones that are up there. With all these big fallen trees, there's got to be something much larger around the corner. looks like the shape of Africa. Oh, on the left, there's a monkey over there. Almost missed him. He's walking around the house. These trees are next to us. Is he walking? That's called a mandrel. You can think of Rafiki from the Lion King if you want to know what space is. The Lion King! Mandrel is actually the largest species of monkey. They reach about 100 pounds in size. But I don't think that we're done with the elephants just yet. So let's bring it 
compared to those guys. Due to how large they are, they eat around 300 pounds of vegetation every day. They just don't have a lot of stomach acid, so they do defecate over half of what they consume and spread it right back out to help the biological systems. And you can imagine they're not exactly getting what they need to eat. They come over here. They eat red clay balls to get nutrients. Any test marks are a sign of your soil. There's the baby between the tree and the rock. Okay. Give her a second. She might walk out on the other side. She can't stay here long. in these dark hills. We're searching for cheetahs over here. There they are in that back right corner. There's three of them walking around. There's two more over here, just a little harder. They found these three at a good time. They're usually found like this when they lay down and blend in. They're in the back right corner among the dirt. 
do that vegetation one. There's two of them. I do run at 60 to 70 miles per hour in less than three seconds. With their intense speed is built to increase their body temperature to make them tired. And they lay down. Actually, it's protected when they lay down like that from predators who may come steal their food from them. Which happens about 50% of the time, so it's too weak to fight back for it. It can happen from these guys over here if you can find them. Green truck, there's ostriches to the right of it. See him? See him now? He's laying down on the rock. I don't know if he's in front of the truck. See him? Keep looking at the veil below him on this other rock. No, no, he's going outside. Mommy lion. Mommy lion. See mommy lion? They're sleeping too. To the left, before the green grass back there, there's three warthogs and a little pile. They're furry gray rocks. On the left of this giant tree. I think you can see them right there, behind the rock line, before the green grass. They have good camouflage though, and they do change their sleeping patterns to match their predators. It gives them an advantage at staying safe at any point in time. Always a surprise, a surprise to find them. Oh, and the ostrich emerged a little bit over there on the right. She's walking in the shadows. That's the tallest bird in the world. Though they are known to be flightless. Run at 40 miles per hour. They'll use their wings to change direction as they do. They're too tall to actually hang out. Go. And instead of goodbye, we're going to say Kwa Harini. The jeans go well. 
Go wild, go have a good day. Thank you for joining me. My name's Jill, I'm from Louisiana. Who's supposed to be your friend? I don't think they are. Now, if you're on the right, watch your hands, arms, legs, and feet. The doors are going to open. Watch your step and you exit. Have a great day. Hi Brantley here. If you enjoyed this video please smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching.